They just shot a guy in the street. Oh. Get down, get down, get down. Ecuador is in a state of emergency and a state of crisis. In this sketchy city that's on lockdown. One of the country's most notorious drug gang bosses has escaped prison. Estos grupos narcoterroristas pretenden amedrentarnos y creen que cederemos ante sus demandas. In this footage of gunmen bursting onto the set of a live TV show has shocked the world. But this hasn't come out of nowhere. Ecuador has seen one of its bloodiest years on record. The country has been sliding into a state of chaos for years now. This is the story of how a relatively peaceful nation, building a new image based on tourism, became a hotbed for drug trafficking and a vicious battleground for gang warfare. His latest crisis began when guards went to move gang leader Adolfo Maceas, also known as Fito, to a maximum security facility. They discovered he wasn't in his cell at the less secure prison. The convict, who is a leader of one of Ecuador's most notorious drug gangs, Los Chaneros, had escaped. What followed can only be described as coordinated chaos. About 150 prison guards and staff were taken hostage by prisoners in incidents in at least six different jails. In the days that followed, the violence spread to the streets, with seven police officers kidnapped and five explosions in several cities. This led the president to declare a 60-day state of emergency. That means that 17 million people now find themselves living under a curfew enforced by armed soldiers. La gente está con miedo, ya no quiere salir. Los negocios cierran con mucho miedo de lo que está sucediendo ahorita en nuestro Ecuador. Oh, he just hit with a machete. Dinámica y en el momento en que a mí incluso me apuntan con una carabina me ponen un explosivo en el bolsillo de la chaqueta. Realmente momentos tan desconcertantes, pero a la vez me encontraba tranquilo. The attack on the TV station made President Naboa go one step further, recognizing what he called an internal armed conflict and identifying nearly two dozen gangs as terrorist groups, including Los Cheneros. This now makes the gang military targets. El presente y el futuro de nuestra patria está en juego y ningún acto de terror nos hará claudicar. They're closing them all because there's guys with guns. This American tourist captured the panic as shop owners closed their stores and armed police took to the streets. Oh my God. Oh. But how did it get to this? For a long time, Ecuador was seen as one of South America's safest countries. In the last few years, though, violent crime has surged. In 2023, there were 8,008 violent deaths, the government says, nearly double the figure of the year before. Its murder rates are now comparable to Mexico or Colombia. The way people are being killed makes for grim reading. There have been reports of decapitations, car bombs, bodies hung from bridges, and explosives dropped on prisons from drones. Prison violence has actually become common with gangs often battling each other to control the jails. This spike in violence culminated in the assassination of a presidential candidate in August. <laughs> Before he was shot, Fernando Villavicencio said he'd received threats from Los Chineros because of his promises to tackle corruption and the drug cartels. The government blames this surge in violence on the growing power of cocaine trafficking gangs. And the key question, though, is why have these gangs become so important? Ecuador sits between two of the world's biggest cocaine producers, Peru and Colombia. Drugs have passed through Ecuador for a long time, making their way to North America and Europe. But now, it's become an important part of the supply chain. Cocaine enters Ecuador through neighboring countries and exits via coastal cities like Guayaquil, its main port. And drugs have been found hidden in shipments of bananas coming from the country. Los Chineros is involved in much of the country's cocaine trade, acting as a broker between the Colombian and Mexican drug cartels. 
those gags all want to use Ecuador. It is an attractive prospect to them. The country's official currency is the US dollar. Law enforcement is viewed as weak, and it's geographically close to drug-producing nations. Above all, though, it has gangs available to do business with. For example, Los Chineros has been connected to the Sinaloa cartel. It's one of the most powerful drug cartels in Mexico, arguably also one of the most powerful in the world. I've met up with the Sinaloa cartel through the years and recently filmed with them as they showed me how they produce the opioid drug fentanyl, which has killed thousands of users in the United States. I followed armed gang members as they picked up shipments of precursors, mixed toxic chemicals. It's incredibly dangerous and toxic stuff. And ground the fentanyl into powder in a smoothie maker and hid batches in secret car compartments ready for smuggling. But it's big business and they're making a lot of money. It's groups like these with a huge amount of power that are battling out for dominance of Ecuador's drug trade. And as that continues, violence in prisons and on the streets is simply escalating. Hoy presento los diseños aprobados para la realización de los centros de privación de libertad en Pastaza y Santa Elena. Módulos de supermáxima, máxima y alta seguridad. President Nabo may have declared war on criminal gangs, but the criminal gangs have in turn declared war on the government. The president's plans to eradicate violence is far from an easy win. He faces out of control prisons growing power of drug gangs and the less talked about corruption amongst officials. This is all against a backdrop of a struggling economy still recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic, a growing demand for cocaine across the world and gang rivalries that show no signs of going away. There are concerns this instability may spell trouble for other Latin American nations. In Peru, for example, the government has ordered the police force to the border to stop any chaos spilling over into the country. There have been more than 10 state of emergencies declared in Ecuador since 2021. So it's not really anything new as a term. But could this be a turning point in Ecuador's fight against criminal gangs? Gangs that are steadily turning the country into a war zone.